In this video, we're gonna look at how to build binary commandlets. Binary commandlets are built using .NET and the language of your choice. Uh, in this case, we're gonna be using C Sharp. So um, to build a binary commandlet, we have to set up a C Sharp project, um, bring in the PowerShell standard library, and then start authoring our commandlets. So um, I have a folder created called PSHTML here, and we're actually gonna take the HTML agility pack and uh, build some commandlets around it. So uh, the first thing I need to do is create a .NET project. So I have um, .NET uh, 6 installed. So I have the .NET 6 SDK. And once that's been installed, you actually will have um, a .NET command line tool you can use. So to scaffold out a project, what I'm going to want to do is type .NET new class lib. So a class lib is a class library, and it's just a DLL. Uh, and that is where we will define our binary commandlets. So um, once that runs, you can see my class library was created successfully. And I want to go over to here, and I want to make some changes inside the uh, CS proj. Um, I'm actually going to change what is uh, the target framework. So we're going to do net standard 2.0. So net standard 2.0 is compatible with both Windows PowerShell and PowerShell 7. So setting it to that will um, allow us to run our module in both places. We also want to remove some of the new language features that aren't available in Net Standard 2.0. So our resulting um, project looks like this. Uh, next, I want to add a couple uh, packages. So we can use NuGet to do that, and the .NET command line tool uh, integrates directly with NuGet. So we can say .NET add package, and we're going to get PowerShell standard library. So the PowerShell standard library isn't the actual PowerShell SDK, it's more of just an interface around the SDK. So when we load our module up, it's actually gonna discover the PowerShell SDK inside PowerShell, so it doesn't need to include the whole SDK. So the PowerShell standard library is just a reference to the types that are available inside the PowerShell SDK. Um, the other thing we're gonna install is .NET add package um, HTML agility pack. So the HTML agility pack is used for um, scraping uh, websites. So we can um, pretty much download a website's content and then use it to locate items inside that website. All right, so now that we have this set up, we should be able to build our project. Well, I'm going to delete this class because I think it's a .NET 6 class. So we're going to delete that. And then I am going to do .NET build. And you can see we successfully built our DLL um, PSHTML. And if you look in our bin, there's our DLL. One thing you'll notice is that uh, we do not have the HTML agility pack in there. And to include that, we have to do a .NET publish. So it's going to do a build, and it's going to include all the dependencies. So once we do a publish, we have a publish folder, and now that includes the HTML agility pack. PSHTML and the System Management Automation um, Reference Library, uh, which is what we got with PowerShell Standard Library. All right, so now let's uh, create a couple commandlets. So um, I actually went through and did this before, so I'm going to type everything out. Uh, but I am doing import website command dot cs. So this is my commandlet. So let's just kind of go through uh, what's in here. We have um, a couple of using statements at, top, at the top that's similar to in PowerShell where we say using namespace just so you don't have to type the full type names out. Uh, then we have our namespace, which is PSHTML. We have our commandlet uh, attribute on top of our class. I'm using the standard verb um, import. So there are multiple collections of verbs actually in here. So you can see that uh, you can get all the standard verbs directly from these different classes. And um, I am using the import one from the data set. And then we're just going to say website. Um, this particular class accept, it accepts a single uh, parameter, which is a URI. And you're going to want to uh, inherit from PS commandlet. So PS commandlet gives us all the functionality of a commandlet. Um, and that is where um, process record comes from. 
So you can see here that I'm doing a protected override of process record. So a uh, process record is defined as an abstract um, uh, method inside PS commandlet, and uh, we are, or a virtual method inside PS commandlet, and we are overriding that um, with new functionality. So just like if you were creating a um, advanced function in um, PowerShell directly, process record works the same way here. So you'll see that process record will be called for each item on the pipeline. Um, and we'll actually look at how to uh, accept pipeline input um, in our next commandlet. So this actually doesn't accept pipeline input, so you could use um, one of the other overrides. Here, I'll do it like this. So if we do protected override void, and you can see we have begin processing, end processing, and stop processing. So we could put this in end processing as well because um, we are not accepting uh, command line input. So, um, or pipeline input. So when you're accepting pipeline input, uh, begin processing gets called once, process record gets called for every single item on the pipeline, and then end processing gets one, uh, called once. So in this case, we could put it in end processing like this. Uh, so now, inside end processing, what we want to do is actually um, load our HTML document. Uh, we're just going to take that URI and then um, you can see here, uh, we're going to write it out as a object. So um, that write object command is coming from PS commandlet as well. And if you actually type base dot, you're going to see all the different things that you can call for um, PS commandlet. Uh, and a lot of this is, you know, common things that you kind of experience in PowerShell. So we have things like writing information, progress, verbose, warnings, errors. Um, you can throw terminating errors. Um, this is how you would accept, or this is how you'd um, use sh should process and should continue for things like what if. Um, and you can even get information about um, like the parameter sets that were called, and then host information about where you're running. So uh, lots of good stuff inside PS commandlet. All right, so we have a pretty simple commandlet here. Uh, let's go ahead and um, build it again, publish it. And now you can see we have this DLL in our publish folder and we can go into a Windows terminal and I am going to um, import this module. So I can just say import module and now we have PSHTML in here, and now we should be able to uh, import website. Oops, import website, and we have a URI. So let's get Google. So when we import that website, you can see it downloaded Google, and it has a whole bunch of uh, information about the website. So if we were actually to do a get member on that. You can see that these are all the properties and methods that you have access to in the HTML agility pack. So you can save the document, you, know, you can look through the different nodes and that kind of thing. So lots of information um, inside that class, which is this HTML document class. All right, so one nice to have thing would be to set up um, VS Code to actually launch the Windows terminal for us so we don't have to copy and paste and like jump back and forth. Plus then we can get debugging working. So um, what you can do there is if you press F5, um, it's going to say like you don't you know have anything configured to launch this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select .NET 5 Plus and .NET Core, and it creates this um, launch.json file. And you can see it has a bunch of warnings because it doesn't know what to do, kind of. Um, so let's actually adjust this a little bit. We're going to get rid of all these warnings. Um, what we want to do is. Uh, we don't want to actually try to launch this DLL since it's just a uh, class library. What we want to do is we want to launch PowerShell. So we're going to change the program to PWSH and we're going to put some args in here. Um, so I just have a reference of that so I don't have to type it all. And we will put that in there. So the args that I'm passing to PWSH are um, the no exit arg, uh, otherwise it would load up import the module and then exit, but we want it loaded up so that we can then type commands in it. Uh, then we have the command argument, and we are calling import module of our um, our module, our pshtml module. Um, the other thing that I want to do is I want to run it as an external um, 
an external terminal not an integrated console so it'll pop up a new window and that should do it for our launch.json uh, next what's going to happen is if we try to launch you're going to see it could not find the task build uh, the reason that's missing is or it's giving us that error is because the pre-launch task is set to build um, and you can actually click this configure task button here and now we can say create task.json file from template and we want to do a .NET Core um, task so we're going to click that and now it automatically generated this so this is uh, kind of close to what we want except that we don't want um, we don't want to build, we want to publish. So uh, instead of build, we'll just change this to publish. So it's going to run that .NET publish command. So some of the other things in here uh, that are kind of interesting are um, some, additional, um, some additional properties that we're passing to the .NET command. And then the big one is this problem matcher. So if something fails inside uh, the build, this MS compile um, problem matcher will look at the output of this command and say like, okay, that failed. All right, so now when we press F5, you're gonna see it does a build and it's going to land launch a terminal. And what's cool is that the debugger is attached now. So you can see that we're in uh, debug mode. And if I were to actually come in here and set a breakpoint inside my um, binary command lit, I could then go and import my website, and now we are in a breakpoint inside our C Sharp command line. And that has some information. We can step through it. We can actually see our document in here. It's the same thing that we saw inside PowerShell when I ran get member. Um, so, yeah, it just gives you the ability to debug your command line. All right, so now that behaved the same, um, and we can close our debugger, and we're back in edit mode. So now we have uh, one commandlet created. Uh, let's create another commandlet. Um, this one is going to be for selecting nodes inside um, inside our document. So um, it's going to be select node command dot cs. And again, I'm just going to copy and paste that in there. So in this one, uh, we're actually accepting pipeline input. So I am again inheriting from uh, ps commandlet. And I've set this as select node from the, the common verb set. And then I have uh, two parameters. I have a, um, a mandatory parameter for the document, and that's what's returned from the import website command. And then I have value from pipeline. Next, I have a XPath uh, parameter, and we're going to use that to select nodes inside the document. And uh, you can see here we're using HTML agility pack to select the document node and then call select nodes with the XPath. And that's going to actually return a list of nodes. Um, and what we want to do here then is call write object. And you'll notice that I'm passing in a second parameter. And that parameter is for, um, for enumerating the collection. So if you don't say true to this, it will actually uh, return the collection as a single object. And if you put true in here, it's going to enumerate it and write each one of the objects as a single object to the pipeline, which is typically what you see. All right, so now that we have that, um, we should be able to load up our um, PowerShell terminal again. We can import our website. And now we can do select node xpath. Uh, I think it's head slash title. And you can see we selected the title out of the uh, document. So that's the X path to uh, the head node and then the title um, child node. So um, you can see that the, the title of this document is Google. And that's uh, using X path. So now we have two commandlets. Um, let's look at what it takes to kind of package this into more of a production ready um, command or module. Because typically you won't just import a uh, DLL, you'll import uh, a module manifest uh, PSD1 file, and that will load the, uh, the root module or the DLL that we just created. And we do that because then we can put versioning in there, we can put our description in there, our tags in there, and it's required by the PowerShell gallery. So to create a new module manifest, uh, we can use the new module manifest commandlet. Um, I'm just passing in the path of PSD1, and then I'm sending my root module to um, the DLL. 
So that created my PSD1 file. Um, and then I would ship that along with um, uh, my DLL. So the things that we need to include so far are the PSD1 file and then everything in the published directory. So we need the uh, HTML agility pack and the PSHTML DLL. Technically, you don't need the, the PDB or the system management automation since that will be included in PowerShell. All right, so now we have um, a module manifest. The other thing that we want to create uh, is help because unlike um, advanced functions, you can't really do comment-based help in here. There is a little bit of help text you can put in for like the parameters. So you can say something like help message equals here. But typically, you want to include a help XML file or a MAML file. The MAML files are like kind of hard to generate and work with and a little unwieldy. And um, what we can use to kind of uh, work around that is actually um, use Plat EPS, which is a PowerShell module for generating help for um, command lines and modules. So uh, first of all, what we want to do is generate markdown files. So markdown files are what you use to actually like author the contents of your help. Rather than writing it all in XML, we can update markdown files. So I am going to create a new script to generate the markdown files. So we'll call it markdown.ps1. And if we run that. Uh, we're going to import our module, and then we're going to call it new markdown help. Uh, then we want to specify our module and our output folder. So if I save this and execute it, um, actually, yeah, let's see. Save that and execute it. Uh, it created this help directory here, and it created our two help files. So now you can see that we have our PS uh, HTML uh, help file for import website. You can fill in your synopsis. You can fill in your examples and description. It uh, auto generates all the markdown for the parameters. Um, so it's a pretty uh, pretty nice to have uh, er, uh, module. So if you add more command lines, you can call new markdown help again, um, and it won't replace the existing ones that you have. There's also a date markdown help and that will add new parameters if you add new parameters um, and it will update all the md files for you um, and then once you actually have your markdown files um, set uh, you want to actually um, you want to create the external help for those markdown files so we're going to do that by using new external help um, the path is help, and that is to our markdown files. So you can see we're pointing at um, these two files here. And then our output path would be the published directory. So everything kind of ends up there. All right, so now if we look at our published directory, we have this PSHTML DML help. And you can see here we have all the help. Uh, I didn't actually fill it out, but the examples are just kind of the, the basic built-in ones that tell you to pretty much fill out the synopsis and that kind of thing. Um, so if I were to actually uh, run our um, module again, it's building. Oh, oh I, uh, it failed because what has happened is I ran Plat EPS inside the integrated terminal here. So now my, my module is loaded in there and it's locked. So I, I can't rebuild it. So I actually have to stop the integrated terminal and start it again to actually be able to build the module. So let's see if that works this time. And now you can see it loaded because I closed that. All right, so now let's see if we can do get help on import website. And now you can see we have the, like, the basic synopsis stuff in there. Uh, if you were to fill this out, it would have just shown um, your help for that. All right, so uh, we kind of went through how to um, build a, a, a binary module here. So we have two commandlets that we specified in C Sharp, and we're build, bringing in a third-party library that we're calling inside there. Um, we have another lecture that covers publishing this module um, to the PowerShell gallery. Um, we're going to actually take this, kind of package it up nicely, and then ship it up to the PowerShell gallery using um, the publish module command. So uh, definitely if you have questions, uh, feel free to comment in the comment section.